I want to talk to you today about uh, my embossing tool. I have a new design for my embossing tool. This is the old design and let me just review how I recommend you use it. We're going to look at the, the one uh, hole slot. This is work really hard to get the tip uh, absolutely perfect so that it could enter the slot and emboss and give you a lot of control. The new design adds a little bit more uh, possibilities at the rivet end and I'm going to demonstrate that. So first off uh, you dip the tip in a little bit of mineral oil. I have a bit of mineral oil in a sponge that I keep in a little case here. Um, and the best use of the embossing tool is to run the tool along the slot and you're pushing in a ridge of brass. Now it's best to keep uh, uh, keep the tool perpendicular to the slot. That means you don't go up and down this way or or wiggle back and forth. You really keep your fingers steady so that you go uh, perpendicular to the slot. You, you really feel the brass being pushed into the slot. And when you get to the part where you haven't reached or haven't pushed so far, you can feel that. Um, so I get a lot of information from the feedback in my fingers. I also uh, really get a lot of feedback from visual uh, cues. You can see as you push the brass into the slot, uh, there's a there's a little bright brightness, and you can you can see what you're doing. And and the information that I get from looking at the top of the slot is as important as uh, using a light box or any other method to look at light coming through the slot. So I use all three sources of information. So let me get back to this. So we push brass into the slot. When we get to the tip, we lift the tool up and we go over the reed and push brass in that way. Flip the tool around, do the same thing, keep the tool perpendicular to the slot when you get uh, use feedback to feel how much you've how far you've gone and then use the rest of this the the slot and then don't forget the tip you want to emboss that too and when you're done embossing you can you can sort of check to see that you've done a, jo a good job by feeling for a little ridge that little ridge of metal that you just You've just created the the other thing you're going to do is you're going to look at light bouncing through the slot now since the lights reflecting my lights coming from ab above my head uh, uh, and a little bit to one side it's bouncing off so I can't really see light coming from hitting the paper and coming from the bottom so we're going to sh sh uh, shade the the uh, the slot and now you get a good view especially if you tilt the reed plate up and push the reed into the slot as do and you don't need any equipment uh, to do it. Um, now what's the innovation with my new tool? Well angles are important. Uh, you might want to create that ridge of metal with a 45 degree angle, you might want to create that ridge at a flatter angle. I visualize the slot as a little swimming pool. It's filled with water. And imagine what happens as that reed slaps down onto that surface of water. Uh, if you have uh, a 45 degree angle, water's going to splash at a 45 degree angle and and if if these were spectators watching the swim meet they'd get wet if that angle was more was was smaller was lower and you had almost a 90 degree angle uh, it's like putting your finger on the tip of a fire hose and it, 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 the, the pressure will cause the water to squirt uh, and in this case um, instead of squirting at a 45 degree angle, it's going to squirt straight up. Okay, so uh, 
what angle is best really depends on the situation. But what's interesting is what happens when we get to the rivet end. With the old tool, we sort of have to angle uh, the tool to, to keep a low angle if that's what we want to do. What this tool, what the new version does, it is a, is it has a, a, a some a, a recess, uh, and it allows you to uh, uh, emboss at a low angle at the rivet end, and still maintain that perpendicular. You don't have to you don't have to angle the tool to get. You can keep that perpendicular, which. I find really speeds things up and really adds a lot of precision. Um, just to to clarify something, some people say, well, why don't you just use an X-Acto knife? I mean, that's a very precise tool. Well, it is. However, i a scrap reed plate. The danger with the X-Acto knife is that it's a sharp, it's a sharp edge. And you might successfully push brass in but you might also shave it off right with this tool with the rounded with any of my embossing tools that bottom surface is nice and rounded it's made for for deforming it's made for for bending for for pushing uh, brass in and not shaving it off so I already feature a tuning end on my five cent tool which uh, you know is just really effective at scraping off brass. The embossing tool is is thicker. This is the the five cent tool. It's made to be flexible because it's supporting a reed, and it's made to get in that slot. Uh, this is made of the same uh, hardened and tempered high carbon steel, but it's thicker, and you might want to be able to take off, you know, a larger amount of brass at a time to get the job done, uh, save yourself a little bit of time. I've, this is an embossing tool I think I've used for over a year and it's still good to go. But let's say that, that something happened and you need to uh, sharpen it. Commonly available sandpaper, 400 grit or 600 grit is fine. You'll notice there's a rounded tip. Use that rounded tip to rock the tool down, and when it when it hits the bottom, just draw it back once, and you're good to go. You're going to feel a little scratch. You've just sharpened that tip. Same thing with with the tuning end. Uh, rock it down until you hit rock bottom, and then and the lighting isn't very good. I apologize. And then draw backwards, and you've just sharpened that. It's important that when you rock back don't go too far because then you're just going to you're going to work against yourself you really have to rock back until it, it touches and you have a nice long surface here to guide you ouch a uh, nice long surface to guide you that's really effective i really felt the point on that one it dug right into my skin same here too to make it easy to sharpen you have that long edge that you can go against so you don't over over curve and, and, and dull the tip. If you do, don't worry about it. Give me give me a shout and I'll fix you right up. Uh, I'll get you going. Uh, these tools, I can guarantee these tools will work for you for a very, very long time.